everyone, so today I'm sharing with you my vlog from my trip to Europe in 2019 when I went on exchange. As you can see now, I'm currently on the Paris Metro. Here is the um, church that I went to. And this video is basically a bunch of clips of all the sights and the scenery that I saw. So I thought it was really beautiful, but it can get a little bit boring. So I decided to do a little bit of a voiceover just to share with you guys some of my thoughts as I was experiencing this and also to reminisce and reflect on my experiences, especially because I love traveling so much and I am so thankful that I went when I did in 2019 because it was basically the calm before the storm of the horrid uh, COVID situation in 2020 and now we can't travel anymore so I'm really glad that I did this. So this is my trip to Paris as you can probably see on the screen there are a lot of captions of all the famous places that I went to. I'm not going to pronounce them all because I will butcher it really hard but as you can see the architecture is just so beautiful and when I explored, this is my first day there, this was the first time I have ever been to Paris and I was just amazed by the amazing scenery and this is again me on the train. Um, I just was like I literally fell in love with how beautiful the architecture and the buildings were and this trip was actually my first time going overseas without any family. Here's the Eiffel Tower again from a different angle, still as gorgeous as it is when I first saw it. We will constantly be awestruck by it and there's these pretty flowers here. I'm about to go on a river cruise on the river scene. Scene? I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. I'm terrible. I am on the boat now, and there's the Eiffel Tower behind me. As you can see from those little clips of me talking, I was just absolutely awestruck and so grateful to be there. So even though it was my first trip without family, I actually met up with my family that lives in Paris that I've actually never met and I didn't really talk to them or have any contact until I decided to go to Paris um, and then I met them for the first time and they were so lovely and so sweet and they took me around and showed me the beautiful city and I also stayed with them for I think it was three days and two nights or it was like four days and three nights something like that a couple days and the reason why I was in Paris for a few days was because I had booked a flight to London however um, I was going to my exchange program that was in London King's College London you'll see this at the end of the video but I had a few days before my program started so I was like why don't I just go to Paris and explore it for a few days and also meet my family there so that's what I decided to do so actually before I came to Paris I was on a plane ride for about eight to nine hours from Sydney to Hong Kong and then I had a three hour stopover in Hong Kong and I've actually been to Hong Kong many times in the past so it was really nice because it's my first time traveling overseas and like by myself so it was really good to be at an airport that I was familiar with um, and it made me just feel really independent and just more like an adult because I was doing things all on my own. Um, and then from Hong Kong, I took a 13 hour flight from uh, Hong Kong to London Heathrow and I slept for most of the flight but the last few hours I was definitely feeling it and I was like, please get me off this flight. I am 
at Chateau Versailles. <laughs> this is my auntie. <laughs> and it's very nice here as you can see. This is the Palace of Versailles where the kings of France built a castle to live in. Um, and it's very very hot right now. It's like 36 degrees Celsius in France so a bit dying but <laughs> that's okay. So this was another day that I went to Palace of Versailles and it was so grand, so gorgeous, it was immaculate and it was also just so hot on this day. I think I almost died of heat stroke but my lovely auntie, uh, she brought me here and I am just in awe of how beautiful it is. I will never get over it. Even the gardens are so gorgeous and if you're wondering what relationship uh, my family is, um, my auntie that you just saw, she is the daughter of one of my grandmother's younger sisters. So I stayed at my grandmother's younger sister's house and I met her daughter and also her son that also lives with her and I actually learned a lot about my grandmother's side of the family which is really nice. I learned that she used to work at Hermes when she first immigrated to France and she actually immigrated to France before my grandmother and all of my aunties moved to Australia. So it was really interesting to put into perspective how my grandmother's family has diverted so much and how the lives of you know all the future generations are so different with one family living in Paris and how different that life is and then also now my family who is living in Sydney, Australia. And to think that we've come so far from living in Vietnam and now we're living in westernized countries and now I am traveling to Europe and that's such a privilege because if my family stayed in Vietnam they would be way too poor and I wouldn't have the privilege of traveling so it really put into perspective a lot of things and how lucky I was and that's why I was just so grateful particularly on this trip because I genuinely would not have the chance to do this if uh, my family didn't come over to Australia after the Vietnam War. It was honestly really nice having family in Paris because even though I was so far from home, I felt still connected to my roots and my grandmother's sister cooked me um, some really good Vietnamese food including bun xeo and it was so yummy. There's a fountain here and it's really really hot so I'm just standing here and getting some water sprayed on me which is very much needed. As you can see the sights behind me are absolutely gorgeous. I'm red as a tomato so that's fun but yeah it's actually so beautiful. What really struck me as different when I visited Paris was just how much history was behind each building. So I'm in the actual palace now as you can see I am wet <laughs> from sweating and how long that history was which is a really big difference compared to Australia who have only been probably like 200 years old in its European colonized history. Of course there was the history of indigenous people that were living here 40,000 to 80,000 years ago but it's just such a stark contrast between the lack of history that we have in Australia again that's just counting the European colonized history but I do think that indigenous history should have a more prominent role in Australia and sure we learn bits and pieces of it 
at school but it's definitely not as well known as it should be um, and that's why I find learning about indigenous culture is really interesting. I'm sure you saw the clips from earlier in this vlog of an exhibition of um, indigenous life. Here is my auntie pointing out landmarks on this map. I think it's a map of France, but I could be wrong. And the vlog is almost over, so I'll let you enjoy the clips. The last clip is of me arriving at my student accommodation at King's College London, and I still have to edit and upload that footage so let me know if you're looking forward to seeing that and if you like the format of this one and I shall continue doing as such. Bye bye! I just made it to my student accommodation at King's College London and my room is actually really nice. I have my bed. I'll give a tour in a bit. A bit of a trek coming from Paris to London. I had to take the tube for the first time, um, but I made it alive and yeah.